Alright, so you guys have asked for it and I have finally done it. I'm going to do a little review and demo on how to use my Bailey slab roller. So this is specifically for this slab roller right here but some of the things will transfer across to other brands of slab rollers. Now, as I mentioned, this is a Bailey Pottery slab roller. It's their DRD2 30 inch G with the 69 inch table. I know, that's a lot of stuff. I will break it all down and explain what it means. So the DRD means dual roller drive. So there's two rollers in here. We're gonna get in close and I'm gonna show you those rollers. And the great thing about the dual roller drive is you're pressing your sheet of clay through these two rollers so they're giving a nice even pressure all the way along and giving you the most even slab you could possibly get, or at least I think so. Now the 30 means 30 inches wide. That is from this side to this side. It's a 30 inch wide slab that I can get. The reason I went with this one, and the next step down is a 24 inch wide, which is great, that's two feet of clay, but when you go up to 30 inches, that means I can make a bowl that is definitely bigger than 24 inches when you figure the slumping down in of a bowl. And also, if I wanna make a tile mural, I can have it be 30 inches tall, which if you're doing something like a custom backsplash, you might want that extra height. Of course, you could roll out multiple smaller slabs and put them all together, but for me, I just found it was easier. Also, I do a lot of big platters, so if you're doing big hand-built platters, you're going to want a little wider slab. Something to think about. Okay, so the dual roller drive is those two rollers that squishes it together. 69-inch table. Well, they make a 48-inch table, which is great, but I also want to be able to work at my table, as you can see. This table is big. I have plenty of room. Oftentimes you might see me filming at this table, so I'll have it in a different position in the studio. And you can actually sit on the side. I actually sit on this side because the, the slab roller is actually pulled out from the wall. But I can sit over here and work at this table. Plus it holds a great big sheet of clay so that I can just come along and cut off what I need and take it away. So for me, the bigger table was definitely something I had to have. Now, the G is their gear system, which is this right here. Now listen, click, 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 click. Nice, right? What if somebody wants to go the wrong way with it? Uh-uh, it's not happening. You're not going. So if you teach little kids or people who just want to come in and mess with your equipment, they're not going to be able to because this locks up. So you can only go one way. And this one way is this way, right here, through the machine. So you load your clay up here on this end. It goes through the rollers comes out the other side here. And all you do is sit here and pretend you're the captain of a boat and you're steering a really, really large ship. And it just clicks along as you pull. Now they make another handle that you can get. It's a little different shape. I went with this one because it provides more leverage. And for me, I like to be able to reach out and grab and pull, especially if I'm rolling a lot of clay through here. Now they also have a mechanized one. So you can get a motorized roller. So if you want to, just line your clay up, put it through, push the button, and it does the work for you. I don't mind this. This is not a problem for me, but I could see where somebody might want to get the fancier one. That's fine. So a couple other things I'm going to mention before we actually put the clay through and show you how it works is when I bought mine, I got a sheet of canvas. So make sure you get a sheet of canvas that's as long as your table times two. So I rounded up to 70 inches times two makes that 140. Yes, I can do math. So I got a 140 inch long sheet of canvas and I got two. And the reason I got two is because I like to use light colored clays and I like to use brown red clays. So I have one right here. This is the one I use for when I'm using B-Mix or stoneware that is light colored. But there's two sides you say. Why do you need two canvases? Ah, because I have two kinds of light colored clay. I have a light colored stoneware, B-Mix, which is a nice buff color, but I also do porcelain. So the other side is my porcelain side. And to differentiate, the reason like I can know, I wrote, I wrote a little letter P on here. You might not be able to see it, but in marker I wrote P. So I know my porcelain's on this side, the stoneware goes on the side that doesn't have the P. So that kind of is self-explanatory. And then the other one that I have, Sometimes I'll do a red clay, and sometimes I'll do more of a brown clay. So when I open this up, you're going to be able to tell the red right away. You're going to see it. Ah, red clay happening right there. So this is my red clay side, and the other side is what I use for my tan or brown clays. 
So I use these canvases to roll out my slabs and you make a sandwich with your clay. You have a layer of canvas, a layer of clay, and then another layer of canvas. So it's like, hi, I'm your canvas, here's your clay, here's your other canvas. And we're going to go through and put a slab through and I'll show you how I roll it. Now, another great thing about having a slab roller that has its own table like this one does is as you can see by all of my lovely storage underneath, here I've got my decorative rolling pins, I've got my templates, I've got cookie cutters, I've got some tools down there. I also have over here underneath my clay, so I can keep my clay storage here as well. So you might think this giant slab roller is going to take up so much space in my studio. It's going to take up space, but it's going to be your work table and it's going to be a place to store things underneath it behind. And what I usually do when I want to make it look really pretty, because this is metal here, I will take some fabric and I'll get some magnets and I will just tack the magnets right up here on the underside and you can have a sheet of fabric hanging in the front and then it looks super cute and people are like, wow, look at that, it's decorative. No, it's just to hide the mess that's under there, honestly. Alright, so I'm going to bring you around to the side here and we're going to roll out a slab of clay and I'm going to show you how easy it is to use this slab roller. Alright, so here we are on the other end of the slab roller. So before you saw me standing in front, this is the business end. This is where all the stuff happens. So right here you can see these dual rollers. One roller, two roller, one on top, one on bottom, and the clay is going to roll through there. And then if you look right here, I have this little gauge, and it's measured in inches. So it'll have half inch, one inch, one and a half inch, plus it always has the increments, you know, you can have your sixteenths and your eighths of an inch as well. Now what I've done on here is, after using this for a while, I realized there was a certain thickness that I really liked for my clay to be, and it's not a quarter inch, it's actually just a tiny bit bigger than a quarter inch. So I made a little mark on my slab roller with a sharpie, because that's my thickness that I like. And the way you adjust it is this knob right here, so you crank it up or down, and that raises and lowers this little red arrow right here. So it'll really match up exactly with the thickness of the slab you want. So I'm going to be making pie plates. Awesome, right? So I want it to be a little thicker than a quarter of an inch because I'm going to be doing some texturizing and stretching of this clay. So it's going to get thinner, plus it's ovenware, so I want it to be just a little more durable than if it was, say, a plate or a cup because it's going to go in and, out, in and out of the oven. Alright, so I want to set this, so we're just going to crank this up to where I want it. Now, I suggest you experiment with different thicknesses and what you like the best, but because this will measure exactly the thickness I want, I don't have to worry about using a board or something. Some slab rollers use a board. You might not know this, but the board determines the thickness, so thicker boards give you a thinner slab. Mine, I just use this gauge and a canvas sheet. That's it. That's all. Okay, so I'm going to grab my canvas. So I've already opened it up and I laid it out. You can kind of see some of it over here. And here it's coming back. And look, there's the marking. So this is my red clay canvas. And you know how we can tell R <laughs> for red clay, just like we had P for porcelain. So I'm going to pull this out. And because this has been folded, it has a little crease in the dead center. And I suggest when you get your canvas, you fold it in half lengthwise and maybe run an iron over it and that will create a crease so that you know exactly where the middle is. So I'm going to pull this down. Here's my crease and because I've been using this for about seven years, this canvas for seven years, that's right, um, the crease is very much there. <laughs> so I'm just going to line this up and I'm pressing my canvas up to my roller. So the canvas is in here, up to the roller. Now we don't have any clay. We need clay. Next step get yourself some clay. I'm using my red slash brown canvas, so I need red slash brown clay, right? But um, right here, it's like magic. This is Laguna 60. It is a tan buff with speckle. I really love it. This is also an ovenware clay. Now this is their number 60, it's called. So um, it's a really great cone 5, cone 6 clay, and it's what we're going to be putting through the slab roller because I'm making pie plates with it. So when I work with my slab roller, I just go ahead and take the bags of clay when they're fresh like this, open it up, grab my wire, 
and I'm going to cut a slice off of this vertically. I don't wedge them. It has been de-aired at the factory. It has come in this little pug. This is It comes out of a pug mill, so it's like a pug of clay, they call it. So it comes like this in a block. The air is already out of it. I don't have to wedge it. Not for rolling out a slab. You don't even have to wedge it for throwing either. You just cut a hunk off and shape it and throw it. I know. Not wedging. So I open up my bag. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. And then I can put through this slab roller half a bag easily and get a nice big long slab of clay. But that's a lot of clay starting out, so I usually divide it into a quarter. So there's half, there's quarter. I'm going to take my wire, and you might say, wait a minute, you didn't take your plastic off all the way. We're going to get there. So I'm going to slide down, just like that. Now I'm going to flip it over. So I've started the wire. Now I'm going to turn over my clay. I'm going to take the bag off all the way. But we're going to save it, so we're going to put the rest back in. I'm going to pull my wire through. Done. Always clean your wire after, because you don't want that dried up clay stuck on there. And then I just squish it back onto the block. I'm going to peel this section off. So this is what we're going to be rolling through the slab roller. I'll sit that down. And now I'm just going to put the rest of this back, because we will use this for something else later. Don't try to line it up and get it back in the exact same way it came out. It'll never work. Just put it back in there as best you can. And make sure there's no excess air in there. So, so I usually grab it like this, and then I twist. Then, pardon my reach, I go over here and grab my rubber band. And then I just reattach my rubber band. That's it. Done. So this clay will just sit under my slab roller, and it will stay there till I use it all up. And then as I have scraps, I will just squash them up and put them back in this bag. Or if I have another bag going, which will be labeled as well. I always label my bags because I use multiple clays in my studio. All right, so we're going to put that down there. And now we have our slab. Now, this slab roller, I could roll this slab right in. I could shove it through and roll it out. But I want to thin it out a little bit just to make my life a little easier. And I have found if you do not have access to a wooden mallet, that this was a slab, was a rolling pin that the pin ends broke off of. So now it's just a wooden cylinder. It's good for home defense or pounding out your slab. So that's what we're going to use it for. So I just take my little now pounder, we are going to call it. And if your clay is sticky, it might stick a bit. Word to the wise. If you've used this on white clay recently, wipe it down before you use it on your red clay. I neglected to do that. So I'm going to have little specks of light clay. It'll be alright. You won't see them when we're done. But if I was doing porcelain and I previously used a brown clay like this, little specks of brown in my porcelain clay would have been bad. So do you see how it's stretching the clay? Just a bit. I want it to be about an inch thick. That's, that's good. And here is a great, a great little tip I'm going to give you. If you're rolling out a slab and it needs to be a certain width, not length, but width, make sure you have the width at this point because if you don't, you're not really going to get it later. So say I wanted to make a platter that needed to be 17 inches wide and 30 inches long, right? You need to make sure you have your 17 inches now. So from this end to this end, it needs to measure that 17. Now I'm not doing that. I'm doing a pie plate that's going to be 9 and a half, but then it's going to have almost 2 inches on each side. So 9 and a half, 10 and a half, 11 and a half. I need it to be about 12 inches. This is definitely wider than 12 inches, so I don't have to worry about that. But it's something to think about. Okay. Line it up. Make sure you have your crease right here. Double check to make sure the thickness is set to where you want it. If you roll it out and it's too thick, you can roll it through again. It's a little unwieldy to move a big slab. And if you roll it out and it's too thin and you can't use it, you just got to smosh all your clay back up, put it back through. You don't want to do that, so double check. You know what they say, measure twice, roll out once. So I'm just going to line this up so you kind of shove it up in there. See, I'm just using the palms of my hands. 
get it lined up. Okay, so now I'm gonna move over here and drive the boat because I gotta be on this side. We're just gonna start cranking, that's all. So I'm just gonna hold this steady until it catches. Now you'll notice that my canvas is already caught, so it's just gonna feed through. And all you need to do is make sure this doesn't get bunched up in here and wrinkle up, and just keep cranking it, just like this. It's doing the work, and I'm just pretending I'm steering the boat. Here we go. There it goes. It's almost through. Oh, bye. That's it. So when this just spins and click, 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 clicks like that, you're done. You've got your clay through. So then you come over here. You flip your canvas down like that. Make sure it's not folded over like I have right here. Fix that. Tuck it in. Nice and neat. And then you just pull your slab out just like this. Just like that. And then you open up your canvas. And here is our beautifully rolled slab down here. And it's ready to be worked with. Now, if I need to make it a little thinner, I can easily do that with a rolling pin. I could go ahead and I could roll it out that way by hand. But you saw how easy this was to use. So if you want to roll out big slabs of clay, you want the perfect thickness every time, this is the slab roller to get. I love it. All right, I got a few more things to say and then we're done. So we have our rolled out slab right here, and you saw how easy that was, and now you just use it to make whatever you want to make. Now, a couple little safety tips I just want to throw out there, and I know you guys probably don't need this and you know this, but when you're rolling through your roller right here, do not put your fingers in the roller. Do not wear loose clothing or jewelry or anything that can get caught in the roller. You know, you're powering this yourself manually, so you're going here and cranking, you will notice if something gets caught in there, but you can't go backwards. You can't pull anything out. So what you have to do is let it go through all the way. So if you have something on and it gets caught in this roller, you gotta take it off and let it roll through. If it's a piece of jewelry, it will crush it. If it's your finger, you're gonna wanna take this apart because you're not gonna want your finger to roll through. So just be careful. So I've never had that happen. I've never had anything get caught in this roller. Um, the only thing that ever happens is sometimes this canvas right here gets creased and then I have a little issue with a crease coming through my clay, but that's the only issue. I just want to put that safety like tip out there because I don't want anyone getting hurt at all. So I'm just trying to watch out for you guys. Now, in my studio here, I have enough space and I'm lucky that I can have on the wall some tools I use. So my embossed rollers are hanging on the wall here behind me. And then usually these cups here you see in my windowsill will have hand tools that I use for making pots. I also usually have a little bookcase at the end full of other tools as well. So I, you set it up to how you need to set it up in your studio, but I have found this slab roller has been fabulous. I've been using this particular one for seven years now. It was a birthday gift. Maybe the best birthday gift so far. Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, but it's right up there. I do love it. I use it all the time. Usually the way I work is I'll roll out a great big slab of clay, much bigger than this piece we rolled out today. So we have this slab right here I just rolled out. out. Usually I roll out a much bigger slab. Usually I'll roll it out to cover the whole table. And then I have boards in my studio. I cut up what I need, I set them to the side on shelves, and then I use them as I go through my day. So that I don't have to sit there and roll out more slabs and more slabs and more slabs. I don't have to take that time. I just roll out one big one every morning or maybe I'm doing a lot of hand building. I'll roll out one big one in the morning, and then I'll go eat lunch, and I'll come back and roll out another slab later in the day. Very easy. And if you think it takes up too much room, just use it as your work table now. I had a separate work table in the studio, and since I got this, this is my work table. I work on my slab roller. So, well there you have it. That's, that's my uh, review of this Bailey DRD230G slab roller with the 69 inch table. So I gave you all the specs, that's what they have. I checked Bailey as of today, me filming this, they're having a sale. This is like $300 off this slab roller and free shipping right now. So Bailey doesn't give me anything to do this, I just use their products and I like it, so I want to put that disclaimer out there. I don't get anything for recommending the slab roller. You might have a slab roller you like, 
even better. And if that's the case, fabulous. I'd love to hear about it. But this one's the one that's worked for me for a long time and I'm very happy with it. So hope this little review and demo helps you make up your mind if you're thinking about getting a slab roller. Or maybe you have one and you just have been having some questions about using it. I have to say, being able to set the thickness with this knob right here is a huge part of why I got this. And the other reason was two rollers, pressing it out nice and even, also not having to use those boards. And those of you who've used slab rollers that use boards to measure the thickness, you know what I'm talking about. Nobody wants to be rolling extra boards through your slab roller. You do not do that with this one. Okay, that's it. It's awesome, I love it. What else can I say? <laughs> All right, well, as always, it has been such a pleasure to share this with you, and I cannot wait until we meet again here in the studio.